G'day team, welcome to another podcast, Martial Arts Business Success. We're here at you, giving you some great content, great advice, tips, tools and strategies on how you can build your business. I'm Phil Britton. I'm Gray McDonald. And we've got another cracker for you today, guys. It's all about how do you build great presence around your brand. Now, I don't mean the presence that mm. you get Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the, the presence that you have in your community, in your environment. Um, you know, and, and more importantly, it's about your brand. You know, like how do people see you? Do you are you blended in with the other martial arts schools of businesses, or do you stand above? Graham, well, look, Phil, let's just let's talk about ourselves first and how we did it, and then let's just share some of the strategy and things that you guys might want to just be aware of. Well, I know it was, uh, geez, when we first started our company at Weimar and we joined forces, we really wanted to make sure we stood out because. You know, at the time there was a trillion different martial arts studios and goodness, it's one of those things that you can get lost in the crowd very quickly. Plus, you've also got to make sure that you're true to your own identity, what you stand for. Mm. So we really did look externally, a lot of great companies that we sort of, I wouldn't say we modeled off of, but we thought, how do they stand out? How, how do they become uh, a, an industry leader or a household name? And look, you know, throwing, throwing some simple ones at you, uh, Apple, look, geez, we're operating off an Apple there, but what made them stand out above all other computer suppliers? Mm. Uh, you know, what about for you thinking about shoes? There's different brands there, but there's certainly a couple that really come straight to mind that are household names and Reebok, Nike, things like that. So what did we do to position ourselves as a strong brand that almost became a household name in our area and that go-to school? Mm. So it's really important first and foremost to, I guess, identify, I would say, what is your, what's your client base? What's your ideal client? Who are you trying to attract? Because I know that we have had plenty of clients who want to be everything to everyone, but unfortunately, they miss the, they miss the brief and they really don't, uh, they don't have a solid uh, identity, they don't have a solid calling, they don't have a solid marketing strategy to go around that. So how do we make sure that we stand out from the crowd? And I would say first and foremost, identify who is it that you're trying to attract? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, if you're a Muay Thai school and, you know, you're trying to attract the fighters, you know, there's no problem with having big mural murals inside and, you know, sort of a youthy type of look and feel with fight posters everywhere. You know, if that's your niche, if that's your client, great, do that sort of thing. But if we did that and our niche client was sort of families, then people would walk in and go, oh, this is not for me. Mm. So I know when we, you know, we bought our school off our instructor and, you know, it had a certain brand, a certain feel, and a certain type of student. Well, when we took over, we wanted to change things up and we looked at the name, so the WA Institute of Martial Arts, so we wanted it to sound elite, almost, you know, the Institute of Martial Arts, we wanted it to sound like an education place. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked at our colours, you know, we went from a particular colour to blue that we have, which yep. is very dynamic, it's very uh, friendly and calming. And then we chose our tagline. Now, just on that, you know, we started with a tagline called excellence in everything because we wanted to we wanted to let everyone know that we were excellent, we were awesome. I mean, you know, we were trying to put it out there, but in actual fact, uh, after about two years, we changed our tagline because we realised rather than tell people how good we are, why don't, why don't we tell people in our tagline what we'll do for them? And that's why we come with that new tagline called Confidence for Life. Mm. So that's just a little bit of an education tip for you. Um, so colour, branding, naming, tagline, you know, it all comes down to, again, like Graham said, who is your client? It needs to be surrounded and targeted to, for us, it was families. Mm. Now, we do teach Muay Thai and we do have fighters that compete. We decided, rather than advertise this as a bit of a strategic move, that we would call our Predator Fight Team, it was a bit more of an underground thing. Yeah. We don't market it, we don't promote it. All we do is say we offer this, um, this class and then we go and do fights and people go, hmm, who are those guys? I never see them around. It sort of becomes this underground team, which worked quite well for us. Yep. Look, so what we've done is to get our brand as a, as a household name, is really thinking about marketing and the strategy behind that marketing as well too. So first and foremost, I guess you've got to really have a bit of a look in the mirror and think, okay, does my, does my branding still resonate now is it still current is it still updated and i certainly know this is a this is a challenge for you guys who are watching or even just listening in have a look back at some of the different companies that have not necessarily changed their name but rebranded their image rebranded their their logos i know that uh, we've done a lot of research on it and 
you know, BP has done that. You know, Apple's done that. You have a look at back, and I would I'd really recommend you guys do this. The the logo that is Apple today is very different. It's it's nearly transformed mm. half a dozen or more times over its lifespan. Mm. So go and have a bit of a look, see. So for those of you who are pretty set in their ways or think, geez, I've already got my logos, I've already got that, this, that, and the other, is it still modernized? Is it still current in today's market? Again, colors, as you mentioned before, Phil, we are big on blue. We have a particular blue that is what Weymouth stands for. And the reason for that is when people start seeing that color, they're instantly reminded of our brand and our logo. Again, too, taglines. I know you mentioned this before, but we have a tagline, again, for a reason, because when we market and when we put it out there, in a short amount of time, it summarizes very, very quickly what we stand for. And again, just throwing it back about the shoes, mm. Nike, just do it. Again, that's their tagline. And it's a great way that, boom, you mention that or you see that written somebody somewhere, instantly you go straight back to that shoe, that brand. Mm. So that was one of the things that we got clarity on our brand. And then it was, our, well, how do we get it out there? How do we make sure that we understand who we're talking to? So when we talk about our, our niche client, we were really targeting families. And that's something that in all of our written material, we really do talk to that particular demographic. So we're talking to the, the mums, the mums and the dads who make the decision to bring those kids in. And uh, look, as an offshoot, yes, we definitely get uh, adults coming separate to that, but our target really was you know, families and kids. Uh, what, what's, just so for the listeners, and listeners out there, what do you think is our percentage of kids, students versus adults? Look, uh, as it stands, I would say we definitely have a, good, probably about a 40% of our student base, which is between the ages of five to eight. Then we've got, again, probably, look, I would say closer to the, the 35%, believe it or not, between that sort of nine to 13, 14 age group. Which is a tough age group. Oh, yeah. And then, again, we've got adults. So I would say, you know, on those numbers, about 75% of our student base is definitely yep. going to be towards kids. Yep. And, and we're talking 1,700 members that we have. We're talking 75% of those kids and those families. Now, we have a really strong adult program, but that's not something that we are just marketing and without digressing into it today is when you think of it from a from a uh, I guess a retention based thing parents generally will sacrifice a lot to allow their kids to have the luxuries in life so definitely something where you have a kids focused school I'm not saying it's the be all and end all it certainly has helped us to you know certainly grow and certainly to keep those members when sometimes times can be a bit tough financially. Mm, excellent. So I guess the next thing is so, you know, once we've got that presence, we've got our brand, our color, our, our taglines, we know who we're marketing to. Uh, how do you stand out from the crowd? You know, what makes you different to another school? Uh, so again, we for, for, it's just giving you experiences from us, I guess, first, is we decided to position ourselves as more of an elitist type school, a professional school. So, you know, we were able to charge more because we had nice equipment. We had big professional floors, great lighting, great smell, you know, like this, this type of environment that we talked about was able to position us as, you know, just not a normal dojo, you know. I think th there was a time there that you would go to a dojo here in Australia. It might be a bit different in America. In Australia, the whole sort of dojo was like, um, it's sort of back alley, industrial zone, shed style, you know, type of dojo. It had a certain feel. And I know when our, with our travels in the US, you know, the US market was more shopping center, shop display, you know, f uh, window front type stuff. So it had a particular feel about it, which was different in Australia. I'm not too sure about the rest of the world. I know there are you know, a range of all of those things. But how do you stand out? Like if I was gonna put, you know, you're gonna ask yourself this, I guess it'd be a good thing, you know, Put your martial arts school in a row of 10. And how are you going to stand out between them? Now, I, I hope that you don't have 10 schools side by side. <laughs> I know we have one directly across the road and we have another probably five within a three to five K radius. Mm. Um, so we still, we still have to stand out from the crowd. But a good practice or a good uh, challenge for you is to go, all right, take photos or get uh, off the net all the photos of all the schools that are you know, around you, 10 of them, and go, okay, so how are we gonna stand out from this mob here who are in our area? And that'll be a good challenge. I mean, I just created that. Then I think we might do that with our stuff. Right? Uh, yeah, look, I think <laughs> write it down, Phil. Write it down. Look, something that uh, 
All right, really important is consistency with your marketing and your branding and again, your communication. Uh, there's been lots of guys that we've helped in the past that are very ad hoc. So they, they've got a, a great idea and they do one and then they drop it and then they go on to another, another, another. And what that does, it gives that the consumer, the you know potential new clients, just confusion. So being able to be consistent and steadfast the entire time is really important. And look, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a story where myself and Phil, uh, a couple of years ago, thought we would bring out some new t-shirts and things like this. And we actually got a bit of a bit of a reality check. So again, this is a, this is a thing that we learned from. Myself and Phil thought, right, great, we've got our, we've got our beautiful dragon logo. And for you guys that are listening in, check us out on waymar.com.au. Check out our logos, get a, get a real understanding. That's our main school. So we thought, right, we're gonna do some awesome new t-shirts. We're gonna have some, some lions and tigers and drags and this, that, the other. And we had a few people come back to us and go, hey guys, we spend a lot of money at your school to wear your brand, to wear your stock standard t-shirt. We don't want to see you change that. That's that's what we, we wear that with pride. And we just went, whoa, <laughs> far out. So it was just that consistency of branding. Now, yeah, you may have a few little uh, different, uh, different t-shirts, but we still have our main logo that is on there and that is what it stands for. So again, mm. consistency there. Look, with all of our marketing material and when we get out and about, uh, we will definitely have little 1%, little knickknacks that that are branded to the hilt that we get to hand out and share. So it's little things that'll you know add value to it, it'll help you stand out. But again, making sure it's consistent with your niche client and what you stand for. Well, uh, that's pretty much a wrap for this today's uh, podcast topic on how do you build a great presence or brand so that you can be seen as a leader in your industry uh, someone who stands out from the crowd. You know, it's busy, it's a noisy world out there. And you know, we're not just in competition. Well, you know, we all say we're not in com competition with other martial arts school. It's a lie, you are. But you also gotta look outside of your niche as well, you know, uh, which is other sporting clubs, the facilities as well. How are you gonna stand out from the crowd? You know, these are the tips and the tools that we've used to, to build our brand and be seen, not just within our state, but within the, you know, the whole of Australia. And obviously, you know, when we do traveling and go and speak on different stages and talking about what we've been doing, what we've done, we definitely raise some eyebrows. So it's fantastic to share <laughs> those those tips and tools. Hey guys, if, if you're listening in and watching, feel free team to, if, if you're concerned or would like some input on your brand and what you stand for, drop us a, drop us a line at admin at teamer.com.au. Throw us a picture of your brand, Throw us a picture of your, your logos, whatnot, um, your marketing. We'll have a quick look at that and give you guys some insights on if it was us, if it was our school, what we would do. Sometimes having someone just soundboard, give you a few suggestions, may give you a different uh, different perspective on things. Or again, you know, we may be able to go, hey, pat on the back, you're on the right track, and away you go. So don't forget, send us some of that stuff. Or if there's any other questions in regards to this topic about building your building your awareness and, and presence in your area and becoming that go-to school, drop us a line. We'll we'll love to help you out. Cool, guys, look, we do this podcast for you. So if you're enjoying the content, if you love what we do and you want more, please head to iTunes and leave a review. Give us a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever. We just want some sort of response on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever. Just let us know how you're enjoying it, the content that you're doing, if you're implementing any of this stuff, or it's just a great uh, listen when you're in the car. We really want to help you out and that's the main thing and just to give you an update we're updating all the video content on our members area so that's almost complete we want to get that out to you guys and show you what the back end of our members area looks like so stay tuned and uh, go get them this week guys have fun Impressive.